Hello YouTube, Mike here. I'm going to teach you today on how to etch on what has become my so far my favorite medium to etch on and that is black scratch paper. This video is brought to you by Mike Kuniko Designs. Follow us on Facebook at mkuniko designs to see our latest projects and ideas. Follow us here on YouTube for more tutorials, unboxings, and reviews. Okay, so etching on black scratch paper. Um, first off, what is it? Uh, black scratch paper is, um, and I won't be able to do it on this because it's it's got an acrylic finish on it, but if if you were to look at this really closely, I'll see if I can get up there real, fat, real close. Um, so this is a black coated material that has like a silver, silver uh, underlayment. And you scratch off the black material in order to expose the underlayment. Now, my daughters actually have a version of this, uh, so it's it's kind of like a kid's toy or a kid's art project, really, um, that is rainbow colored. So they, they're about this big. Uh, you scratch them off, and it's got like a rainbow backing to it. So whatever they, they scratch off, it's kind of got like a nice rainbow pattern to it. Uh, never thought about actually etching uh, using a laser until, and so this is not my original idea. This is this is not, you know, I didn't come up with this process. Um, I, I saw on a, a Facebook group called House of Lasers. Uh, so they showed, they... If you, if you don't follow them on Facebook, you need to, uh, if you're doing any kind of laser engraving. Now they use the, the much more higher end CO2 lasers, uh, which can do quite a bit more than the, than the blue diodes. Um, but, you know, the blue diodes have their own uh, advantages as well, but that's for another video. What I'm gonna show you today is how to etch on this black scratch paper um, using the blue diode laser. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the processing of the photo itself. So I'm going to use uh, my favorite processor, which is Photoshop. You can use pretty much any processor to do this. It has to be able to do three things. The first one is to be able to desaturate the image. So this is, you're taking the color and you're basically turning it into grayscale. Obviously a laser cannot produce a color image. And so putting it in a grayscale format is what helps to actually etch it. The second and third thing, so the two, thing, two things that are kind of combined is brightness and contrast. You have to be able to adjust the brightness and adjust the contrast. The big thing you want to do is have a high dynamic range. You need to have uh, your blacks be very black and your whites be very white. Otherwise you get kind of a more washed out and I can actually show you some uh, examples of, of ones. Well, no, actually I threw them out. <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, so I didn't quite get the contrasting right, and so it washed out the, uh, the etch. Um, so every single etch, including the Vader one, I've done at least twice. Uh, I've done some other ones. I did a Death Star one. I did a, um, an astronaut standing on the moon. Um, really cool etchings but it took time it takes time to process these and it's a lot of trial and error so i'll try to show you i'm actually going to start with an image that i'm i'm going to etch today and go through the entire process of of what i do it may not even turn out right until i etch it and and take a look at it and, and maybe i'll do a follow-on video uh showing the final product and if i had to go back and do it again so uh, stay tuned, that's what we'll be working on, and we'll start off uh, with the image in Photoshop. Okay, I'm in Photoshop, and this is the image that I've chose to try to etch on black scratch paper. Uh, I just, I like the, the, the look of the, the thunderstorms and everything. Um, you get some dynamic lighting, uh, some higher contrast. Uh, I don't know how the clouds are going to do. Uh, this may end up getting washed out uh, in the water here. Um, but, you know, until you try, you never know. Uh, I did get this image off of the uh, Adobe stock that I have um, I have a subscription to. Uh, if you plan to use an image and you plan to sell uh, products made from that image, make sure that you have licensing or permission to do so. Just a little caveat. So I am going to take this image and I'm going to process it the way that I would. I'm, this is my first time processing this image, so I do not know how this will come out. Uh, we'll, we're kind of go through this together. So I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to go to image adjustments. And now normally I would have to desaturate, 
but because this is already a black and white photo, I don't need to desaturate. But this is what you would use uh, to turn it into a grayscale or black and white. Uh, the next thing I want to do is go to brightness and contrast. So I I, I generally will will flip between legacy and not um, just because sometimes they give me what I want. Um, I'm going to turn this brightness down. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want the clouds to be so washed out. Um, so I'm going to turn the brightness down. And again, if you remember from my acrylic video, I'm going to use grayscale on this in light burn. So uh, the, the higher the white, the higher the power. Okay, because I'm going to invert this. So I'm going to show you that in light burn as well. I, um, I didn't do that on the acrylic, but on this, I'm going to invert it because I want the whites to burn at 100% and the blacks to burn at zero. So I'm, the black is the etching, is, is kind of like that black material, and then the white would be the silver. So I'm going to turn the brightness down. About there looks pretty good. And then I'm going to turn the contrast up. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn the brightness up just a hair more. Okay, so this actually is looking halfway decent. I think this might etch pretty good. Um, I should get the, the jagged lightning should uh, show up pretty good. Now, uh, the only thing I'm worried about really is the clouds. Um, I'm worried about these clouds maybe washing it out. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to actually turn that brightness back down. Okay. So we'll see how this works, um, but this is it really it's a cut and try kind of thing. So I will try this. I'll see how it works, and if it if it doesn't work very well, I can go back and do it again. Uh, the next thing I want to do is kind of resize this. So I'm going to go into image, and I want to check the canvas size. Um, I'm going to actually put this in inches. So right now the width it's it's a 10 inch width by f almost six inch height. So actually it's good right where it is. I don't need to change anything. Um, the black scratch paper I'm using is eight and a half by 11. So I'll have a little bit of margin uh, to work with. So I'm just gonna save this image. <clears throat> All right, and then let's open up Lightburn. And I'll show you the settings in Lightburn. Okay, uh, so I'm going to, I don't know why that keeps coming up, but anyway, I'm gonna import and I'm going to go to my black scratch silver. I got a thunderstorm image. Okay. And there is my image. And so I'm set to image right now. I'm set to speed of 118 inches per minute. The max power, I'm going to drop this down to 20. And then the min power is three. Uh, so the min power, you know, and oh, so another thing in here is negative image. You want to make sure that this is negative image. So Black will uh, be zero power, or I should say 3% power. And then the white will be 100% 100 of max power or 20% of, of laser power. Uh, let me know if that does not sound, um, if that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, please let me know, and I can try to walk you through it. So uh, I've got my image set up. I've got it max power of 20%, min power of 3%. And that should be it. Oh, oh, one thing I forgot in Photoshop. Actually, so I'm going to go back in here into Photoshop. The DPI, we need to match the DPI. So I apologize. I know I'm going backwards, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so DPI, right now I've got it set for 250 DPI, which is a line interval of 0 0.004. I've seen people flip between uh, 0 0.004. Metric, 254, I think this comes out clean in, in line interval. So let's just make it 254 because I've seen people uh, make that work better. Uh, the scan angle, I'm going to leave the scan angle at zero. Uh, basically, it will start down here at the bottom. Actually, I'm going to start at 180. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm more worried about the clouds than I am about the, the, um, the water down here. So the scan angle, I'm going to start up here at the top. So, okay, back to the image in Photoshop. One thing I forgot to do is image in image size, <clears throat> I need to make sure this resolution matches. So I'm going to put this at 254 DPI. So hit OK. OK, so that matches. You want the, the DPI in your image to match the DPI that you're going to use in Lightburn. And the reason being is that if you don't have the matching, so 
imagine you know if you have a higher DPI setting. If your if your image is higher DPI than than what your light burn is, it's going to miss lines. Okay, so it will burn at 254 DPI, but because you're at 300 DPI, which is hot, much more compressed, uh, you're going to miss lines, and so your image don't won't show up as well. So anyways. Um, so I need to delete this and re-import because I changed the DPI setting. All right, and so we are there, 254 DPI, 118, 118 inches per minute is basically 3,000 um, millimeters per minute. Max power of 20, min power of 3, and like I said, don't be surprised if I have to come back and redo something on this. So I'm going to save this. Go to my silver thunderstorm. I'm just going to say... If I can tell. Okay, and now I'm going to go out and get this start burning and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I'm out here in my shed. I've got light burn brought up. I've got the image file brought up. I'm verifying that the height and width matches what I expect, which was the 10 inch width, the 5.6102 height. So there's my image. I've got my speed and power set up. And actually, uh, as I came out here, um, one thing I had decided to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to drop the min power down to 1%. Uh, now, why? Well, that bottom number, it, even if the light, it, as long as the laser is on, it will etch on this black scratch paper. It'll do something. So why not zero? Well, I want it to kind of roughen up the black areas instead of just leaving them alone. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is, and, and really the, the change from 3% to 1% is probably not going to be that big of a deal, but I think it'll wash it out less. So I go into my preview, all right, so now it's, it's set to invert. So I'm going to look at, okay, so this is actually how it will burn. So anything that is real white won't burn, or will burn at the min power. Anything that's real black will burn at the max power. Okay, so this image is inverted. So if I invert back, so this should this is how it should look on the scratch. So now I'm going to do my alignment. I've got my laser turned on. I'm just going to bring it up to the bottom corner here. Okay, I'm going to try to align this while holding the camera. So we'll see how well this goes. So I'm going to try to get this as aligned as possible. I have my machine, let me kind of align my machine up a little bit here on the corners. Alright, so then I can use the grid here to kind of make sure I'm straight. Alright, that looks pretty good. And then I'll, I'll use magnets to, to tamp it down. So I'm just going to go from here, I'm going to go up to the next corner. And this is how I do a lot of my alignments. Now, remember this thing is five inches tall. So, yeah, that looked pretty good. Now, the, the question is, is, do I have the width right? And so I'm coming over to the next corner, and we'll see how well my width is. Yep, all right, everything looks good. So it looks like I'm aligned well. I'm gonna tamp this down with some magnets. Uh, let me see, where did my, oh, here they are. All right. So I'm just going to put a couple magnets on the corners just to make sure it stays down. I'm going to lift that up just a hair. All right. And I've got this neodym magnet that's like I, I literally have to slide this thing off because it is a powerful magnet. I'm going to actually bring my my laser. So I'm showing you the whole process really. So I'm going to bring my laser back down to that corner. And I'm just going to check my alignment one more time before I start burning. So bottom left corner looks good. Coming over. Bottom right corner looks good. Come up to the top right corner. And looks good. Okay, so I'm all set up. I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and put uh, some magnets on the edges here because I'm getting a little bit of bowing in the edges and as flat as this can be the better it will be 
And I want to try to make sure this stays out of the way of the laser. It might knock that that magnet off, actually. So, and I'm trying to keep as much of the black material unharmed as possible. Now, the other thing I want, I like to do, take a little bit of dust off and just kind of blow off the surface, make sure it's as clean as possible. I'm seeing a little bit of weirdness in the in the material, but that's okay. For a first cut, this will be all right. So we'll get it burned and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so it is getting probably about two thirds of the way through the burn and I already can tell I'm gonna have to do some uh, changes to the contrast on this. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it's got right now and that way you can kind of see what it's doing and uh, I will probably follow up with a part two of this video, uh, but you can kind of see in the areas around the, uh, let me wait for the laser to kind of move, okay. So in the areas like right around in here, um, you can see the contrasting isn't quite right. Uh, so we need to adjust that. But I mean, overall, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, it is getting a little bit washed out. So I may actually drop this one to 0% on the full black, just to see how that turns out. Um, I may do a couple samples with uh, with some areas in there. And uh, Kyle, let me talk about that real fast. Um, one of the things that I did, and actually I'll show you, uh, let me see where I put it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this was an image I did. Um, so I was doing a Death Star image uh, with a, a, a background here. Um, I started off with this one and I just did kind of a, a sample of the image and then I did it again with changing my settings. This one came out a lot better. I liked how this one turned out. So uh, I do recommend you take your image and maybe crop it down to something that's uh, a much smaller chunk of it uh, so that you can kind of get an idea of how it will burn without having to obviously waste an entire piece of paper. Um, now, I mean, this this stuff is, is fairly cheap, so it's not like you know, I'm wasting wood or anything, but it is recommended that uh, you do take a sample and uh, and mess with it. So I will follow up with a part two probably sometime next week with the adjustments that I make and uh, how it turned out.